Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Um, this is going to be another video about the reluctance motor or attraction motor. I uh, had a couple questions and comments on how these actually operate, so we're going to go over this right now. So, this motor, this motor, both the same thing, just a little bit different in shape. So basically what happens is if you have an electromagnet and a piece of steel, um, as soon as you energize this electromagnet, it's going to attract. So in order to make a motor like this, what you have to do is have timing. So you could use reed switches, hall effects, um, optics, you know, mechanical, however you want to do it. But basically, you want the rotor to be about right here. Uh, you turn on the electromagnet, and it magnetizes this piece for the duration of the electromagnet operation. So it magnetizes it, and now it wants to uh, line up with the electromagnet. So when you get it to right here, you actually have to turn it off or it's just not going to move at all. So you turn it off right here, and then it's going to continue its rotation. And then right at this point, you're going to turn it on again, and it's just going to attract over and line up here. And then you turn it off, and then the inertia continues the rotation, and then on, off, on, off. So these motors are really simple in the fact that you could just use regular steel. These are just steel rings. This is just um, cold rolled steel. Um, this was actually made with a hole saw, so I took a piece of steel actually came off of this one right here. Um, did a center point and then just hole sawed this out to get the oval shape. Uh, this motor right here, see it has a metal plate, um, different direction obviously, so it's like this now. So this one turns on about here and then it attracts to here, turns off, and then this point again it turns on and off. And you could see the magnet right here, these little tiny magnets I use for timing. So uh, as soon as it faces up, it's going to turn off. And that just continues the rotation with the inertia. Um, these could be really powerful motors. They're real simple to make. You don't have to buy any instruments of magnets, rare earth magnets, ceramic, or anything of the sort. Um, this one, like I said, is Hall Effect Sensor. So this one actually has a Hall Effect sensor right here. So on, off, on, off. Um, it has a MOSFET right here. And then this is the output diode. And this actually has two coils on it. So you have two different ways to run this motor. So you can run it with the primary coil, with the primary output. Or you could run the motor with this coil and then use this coil as the output. So that's what this is right here with the full bridge rectifier. Um, this motor actually doesn't have a speed control. It's just a small demonstrational model. Um, but this one does. This one has a built-in speed control there at the bottom. Um, we have our pot right here for speed control. This one has four coils. So as you can see, it's just a bigger version of this. I just took a four inch ring magnet, welded two of them together and then I welded little tabs right here for the electromagnet so it's actually welded like this or say like this and then you could have your rotor in the middle so if you guys aren't familiar with working with steel um, you might find somebody that does that could help you out so those are the basic fundamentals. This motor is actually made out of two of these. I just welded two together. One, two. And then I molded the coils and wound them up to where they slide right on. So that's about it. It's very simple. Uh, no magnets. It just magnetizes the rotor, uh, lines up, turn it off. Let it coast and lines up, turn it on, turn it off. So 
This one turns off twice per revolution. This one has more pulls, so this one actually has an optical timing. So we could see it in there, right there. So this one turns on and off four times per revolution. Um, this one only has the primary circuit output, which goes comes down right here. So this is our MOSFET back here on the back with the heat sink. <coughs> we have the yellow and white wires for output. And it goes into this capacitor discharge. And then it goes into a second battery. Here's our primary battery sitting at 12.6. Um, our secondary battery, 11.9. Uh, and um, let's see how this one runs. So get this started. Let's see on the scope, the little pulses. So this is with a speed control pulse width modulating it to go slow. <coughs> right now we're using about a half an amp. Um, up and down, and then you can see the output. It's about 7 amps, so let's slowly turn this thing up. It's a really torquey little motor. The rotor is just handmade, so not perfectly balanced, but, but you can't really stop this thing. It's pretty damn strong. But this is all mild steel. There's no electrical steel in it. This is completely handmade. And as we turn this thing up, you can see the output starts reacting better. About 7 amps every other second or so. See the battery getting pulsed up. You know, 12, 1219, that goes up to 1260. It's a lot of current pounding in that battery to get it charged up. So here's the waveform at full power on the scope there. Uh, the top is the on time, the bottom is the actual output. You can see it going up and down as the capacitor gets charged. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about how this motor operates, leave it in the comments. Have a good night.